welcome to the discussion on leadership this is one of the most important topics as like as far as organizational behavior is concerned because leadership defines maybe the entire functioning of the organization the type of leader the way he function he or she functions and the situations that the person is in how that person motivates the followers and what much degree of autonomy does he allow to the followers many many things define the functions of the organization and leadership is one of the important domains which issues which define the functions in the organization so here in this discussion we will try to find out like what is leadership how leadership differs from management what are the different leadership functions what are the characteristics of a leader and we'll see the different approaches to the study of leadership like power influence approach behavior approach in which we'll try to concentrate on different behavior approaches like likert systems or styles of leadership participative leadership the managerial grid by blake and morton read these 3d leadership model six emotional leadership styles by goldman we'll try to focus on the treat approach under it the charismatic leadership situational approach like tannenbaum and smith continuum the contingency leadership model the path goal model Hershey Blanchard situational leadership theory leader member exchange approach room yago leadership model transactional and transformational leadership attribution theory of leadership authentic leaders and ethical behavior trust which is the foundation of leadership contemporary leadership roles online leadership multicultural leadership leadership approaches in developing countries substitutes of for leadership so this discussion is is a, in is a much detailed discussion about leadership leadership qualities the different types of leadership how it functions in the organization and uh, how it differs according to the cultures and what is the influence of cultures on leadership behavior and most importantly like can we think of a substitute of leadership in what cases can we think of it and in what cases we cannot think of substitutes for leadership so this is a this discussion will span through three lecture sessions today we'll try to focus on the definition of leadership and how leadership is differentiated from who you know like who is the leader and who is the manager we need to know like what are what are the points of difference and maybe where one is overlapping with the other and what are the good qualities of a leader we will try to focus on the treat approach of leadership and some of the behavioral theories of leadership so to start off with we are to discuss what is leadership so leadership is defined as the process of influencing others to facilitate the attainment of organizationally relevant goals and so if you can see this definition it is the process of influencing others why we do the, why we try to influence others is to facilitate the goal reaching by the organization so there is some set goals for the organization and someone has to drive the employee someone has to be influencing motivating the employees inspiring the employees to reach the goal and set examples while by performing by behaving by demonstrating in such a way like the people get inspired motivated to Uh, reach the goal so that is the function of um, that, that is what leadership means it it is the way of influencing people the process of influencing people in a, to facilitate at an, uh, that the organizational goal relevant goals are attained so um, 
according to Warren Bennis, like um, there are definitely four effective um, characteristics of a leader. Like they provide direction and meaning to the people that they are leading. They generate trust amongst the people. They favor action and risk taking and they are the purveyors of hope. So what we were discussing like we have to show others like as leaders people have to show others how to do certain things and they have to show others not only by saying but doing things that is leading by examples. Then um, as leaders they have to generate trust in the from followers so trust like they are by their side or they like whenever they are in need employees are in need they can approach the leader for um, their their advice their guidance and like the leaders also trust the followers and they believe that they can develop and they trust their competencies so this level of trust is very important when you're talking of um, leadership so again leaders are people who um, who favor action and uh, risk taking and they are like and they they are the people who generate hope uh, um, they, they they are the people who generates hope among the followers like okay um, they can reach the target and they are able to reach the target so these are main four main qualities of um, leadership according to Warren Bennis. When we are talking of um, leadership versus management, so um, leadership is the ability to influence a group towards the achievement of goal. So, um, and management is the use of authority which is inherent in the position that the person is in to direct others and tell them what to um, do and, 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 and that post the position the power itself demands compliance from others. So leadership is not directly connected to the um, post where the person is in but manage the managers and his powers are connected to the organizational position and virtue of that the person demands compliance from others. According to Zalesnik in 1977, um, the difference between managers and leaders is that managers focus attention and energy on how things get done and their role in events that occur or in the decision making process and leaders are more concerned with ideas and in relating to others with more intuitive empathetic ways and what events and decisions mean to people. So if you can understand like um, uh, managers may be uh, is more concerned with um, like how the process part of it like how things get done and their roles and leaders are more concerned with ideas innovative way of doing things and and relating to people in more empathetic ways so that um, they know like how to make decisions and and what decisions mean to people. So like managers also plan, organize, direct, control, um, st staffing, delegation, all these things which are part of management functions and you know, they deal with money, they deal with space, they with facilities, information, um, etc. And um, they, um, they have subordinates and they communicate and um, they, while, while others, leaders have followers, they inspire others, they, they, they encourage creativity and uh, like function, like risk taking on the part of the employees, they encourage them to function properly, they encourage them to innovate. So the, these parts of like tolerance for errors, these are some of the qualities of a 
good leader. So, and uh, leading people towards objectives and bringing orders from uh, like analyzing the chaos and bringing, bringing orders from the chaos. The, this, these are some of the um, like in, uh, influencing others so that you can get voluntary commitment from them like affectional commitment, affective commitment, compliance with hearts. So these are some of the domain where which is which is defined as leadership as compared to what we understand by managers. So like if you can differentiate again managers are um, more related to um, how to control behavior and um, ask how and when sort of questions and um, leaders are more interested in innovation, focusing on people, finding the potential of the people, trying to develop them so that they can develop and map the organization and map it to the organization's objectives. These are certain things like inspiring people, uh, helping them to realize their own potential, moving them towards the organizational goals in short, short directed steps. Uh, encouraging them to take risk. These are some of the qualities which defines a leader and uh, and separates uh, or, or defines the leader and uh, and differentiates it from the uh, that that role of a manager. So like taking questioning the status quo and um, choosing the right way to doing things. These are some of the qualities of uh, like you know, when, when you talk of leadership. Kretsch et al. in 1962 identified 14 functions that a leader may take. These functions are um, divided into task functions and maintenance functions. So the task functions are like executive coordinating group activities and overseeing the setting of policies and goals, planner, deciding how the group will achieve its goal, policy maker, establishing the policies and goals, expert, which is a source of expert information, external group representative, speaking for the group with others, controller of internal relationship, determining the social structure of the group, purveyor of rewards and punishment, controlling members by punishing and rewarding. These are some of the task functions which helps the, the group to attain its task. Now for the group to be maintained as a group, there are other top functions which are classified as maintenance functions. So that the group survives and functions well, these functions are called maintenance functions, which is number one is arbitrator and mediator, resolving disputes in the group, exemplar, like behaving in a way that others should behave, symbol of the group, acting as a symbolic embodiment of the group, its goals and its values, substitute for individual responsibility. Relieving individuals of the need and responsibility of personal decisions. Ideologist being the source of beliefs and values. Father figure, focus for positive emotional feelings of individuals and the object for identification and transference and scapegoat and acting as a target for aggression and hostility, taking the blame on behalf of the group. This function, the scapegoat and the father figure, these two are very important um, functions of a leader as far as maintenance functions are concerned. All functions are very important, but these two functions like when you are 
um, some like if you are acting as a father figure what happens there is a positive emotional transference between the followers and the leaders like the leaders will find very comfort zone a peace in interacting with the leaders and the followers will find peace in interacting with the leaders they can share their views they can um, they can approach um, the leader for getting his or her opinion and um, they can identify with the leader so this function is called the father figure the function of the scapegoat is that when certain blames come on the group for either for poor performance or for other reasons then leaders taking the scapegoat role means the leader comes forward to take the blame on himself or herself and and the saves the followers from this experience which may may hit their self esteem like if somebody tell some derogatory words or uh, criticism is done to the groups it may lower the self esteem of the followers so in that case the leader acts as the scapegoat and takes the blame on himself or herself this is one of the primary functions of um, leaders as far as group maintenance function is concerned no mm, if we are to understand who is a good leader from the view point of a follower then certain we have very certain important points like um it's the organization so uh, organization is very important um, in which organization and also like how far organized the leader is Mm, so that those those things are very important fearlessness the leader has to be fearless in nature so that mm, he is he or she is able to take risk and um, is assertive in nature able to speak his mind like stand firm in terms of like when there are uncertainty and turmoil in the group so person who has a respect for others for the work of others and also for others as individuals like person who leads to in interaction with whom leads to um, satisfaction then one who promotes the interest of the subordinates one who can with whom you can talk with frankness one who has respect for the individual and who has deep knowledge these are some of the qualities which from the view point of the follower can are characteristic some some of a good leader the various other points are like one who has authority over the things that is been done or 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 authority to give certain things in the terms of knowledge towards benefits etc one who is people oriented one who has positive personality and who has good communication who is predictable the who has a great toler power of tolerance who is well informed in his own subject matter can take this um, share the knowledge with the expert opinion where people are stuck with and of in whose at, um, behavior attitude there is a grace in ways of behaving these are classified as characteristics of a good leader by the follower and also continuing our a person with nature of understanding honesty and transparency is very important so that people can look look up to him for the values concerned with the groups and give his example as to as far as questions of transparency are there one who is accessible in nature so easily approachable accessible with whom you can share your feelings and share your where is related to your task these these types of leaders are called accessible leaders one who provides opportunities for others to perform that is also good hmm, leadership quality a leader should be 
quality should be such that the person is able to develop the more important functions of leadership today is not only to lead but also to develop leaders so when you're talking of like providing opportunities one of the good characteristics of a leader is to provide opportunities for the followers so that they can also blossom they can also take, get prepared for the leadership position giving guidance to others to the followers like what they should be doing and what they should not be doing and this guidance may not only be restricted to the work at hand the life in the workplace itself this may extend this cordial relationship this bonding may extend to life outside work also where where the person can share his or her feelings with the leader and the leader in many cases can act as a counselor to give tell and give the guidance like what the person should be doing so that develops a bonding between the follower and the leader when you are talking again of leadership qualities willingness to listen genuineness and having a power of discretion like what like if you have a pool of information and behavior which is to which is to accept and which is not to accept which to like maybe more concerned about which is to be not these are some of the qualities which according to the follower are characteristics of a good leader there are different approaches to the study of leadership Yukel in 1989 identified four approaches to the study of leadership Yukel in 1989 identified four approaches for studying leadership the power influence approach attempts to understand leadership effectiveness in terms of amount and type of power possessed by the leader so the mechanism of power used by these leaders are authority coercion force influence and manipulation so um in when we are talking of that power approach means like what what is the authority we have in the workplace do we have the like do we demand this leadership position? Uh, like we are in this leadership position by coercion what is the force and how can we influence people and like whether we can manipulate the relationship between the followers and the leaders all these define your different ways people use power in organization influence can be by the expertise you can influence people by the uh, knowledge you have expertise in a particular domain and this can act as a source of power for the leaders the behavior approach looks at the actual task performed by leaders so these involve evaluating daily activities and the behavioral characteristics of the leader trait approach is the personal attributes of leaders such as the energy intuition creativity etc the situational approach examines leadership in terms of the relationship with environmental factors and this theory is also called contingency factors because the style of leadership changes based on the situational demands so leaders behavior is contingent on the situation so these are the four approaches to the study of leadership so max weber defined three types of authority so authority is what the ability to control legitimately so that authority could be legal authority and traditional authority and charismatic authority when you're talking of charismatic authority it's by the virtue of the your ways of influencing people your ways of talking behaving the ways of communicating this demands a respect from the others and that gives you an authority so legal authority traditional authority and charismatic authority are the three types of 
authority. When we are talking of trade approaches, Stockdale in 1948, he defined the leader is characterized by a strong drive for responsibility and task completion, vigor and persistence in pursuit of goals, venturesomeness and originality in problem solving, drive to exercise initiative in social situations, self-confidence and sense of personal identity, willingness to accept consequences of decision and action, readiness to absorb interpersonal stress, willingness to tolerate frustration and delay, ability to influence other person's behavior, capacity to structure social interaction systems to the purpose at hand. So you can find there's a long list of traits as listed by Stockdale way back in 1948, which, which are important for a person to qualify as a leader. So, a strong drive for responsibility and task completion like perseverance then taking uh, like again self-confidence, a sense of personal identity then um, uh, willingness to uh, take in uh, interpersonal stress like um, absorb interpersonal and stress, then willingness to tolerate frustration and delay. These are some of the like um, capacity to influence other people behavior. These are some of the important, um, these are some of the important characteristics of a good leader. Ben is in 1990 defined four leadership competencies. So that is the management of attention through a compelling vision, um, communicating skills, communicating skills to necessary to transfer a vision of um, trans, like own vision to others, being able to establish trust through the reliability and cons constancy and knowing one's skills and employing them effectively. So these are four competences in the sense, so you, you have, ought to have a vision to, to be a leader, you have to have a goal and to know how to achieve that goal, what it will lead to and um, um, you, this, this vision, once you have this vision, you need a communication well, communication skill to transfer this vision to others so that others also get to share your vision. So being able to trust the established trust with the followers so that the bonding starts with the leaders and the followers and amongst the followers. So and knowing where one's strength point lies and employing them effectively so that the vision is reached. These are the four leadership competencies as stated by Benis. Giblin, in, also in 1990, four attribute framework for assessing leadership qualities are resourcefulness, astuteness, compatibility and knowledge. So these are the four qualities if possessed by someone that person is called to be a leader. Dylan Schneider in 1992 cited five ingredients for leadership. You can see like vision and focus is one of the important um, ingredients of this model. Then person who has some practical values in the sense values which are helpful in day-to-day -day functioning which are achievable with values in day-to-day -day functioning, awareness and use of time. You know, empowerment and motivation, trying to motivate others and empower others and objectivity and judgment. So, person who is objective in nature and who has a clear cut judgment of defining how to do things like how the alternatives are related to the 
with the, with the pros and cons and how a solution can be reached who, who can use his both head and heart in the decision making process these these are the five ingredients for leadership so according to dylan schneider there are um, four there are five core organizational values like integrity accountability diligence perseverance and discipline and leaders what they do is they derive their power by adopting any of the values a set of values which are consistent with the with the values which are deemed to be important by the organization so these are the five ingredients for leadership Rolf Osterberg in 1987 identified five components of awareness which are essential for business leadership. So what are these five components? We'll have a look into it. First one is hierarchies based on power are detrimental to personal development and must be eliminated. Number two is the manager's role becomes one of coordinating a self-organizing, self-renewing and self-transcending system. That is, here you can see the manager's role may be transforming to a leader's role from being a manager. As we were discussing at the start of this lecture, like when you are talking what is the difference between a leader and manager, you found like manager only controls, but when you are talking of leaders is one who inspires and motivates. So when the manager rules becomes one of coordinating a self-organizing, self-renewing and self-transcending system, then the manager's role is getting transformed into that of leadership. <coughs> Problems are not deferred to higher levels, but they are solved by the workers themselves who have the problems. This is again a good example of empowerment because workers are well equipped enough to solve the problems when they arise in at the spot without referring it to the higher ups and waiting for suggestions from them. Mm. Goal setting is eliminated because it does not encourage exploration and personal development and the profits are reinvested in the company and not used to support other processes. So in that case you can go for more um, experiments, innovations and risk taking behavior because while you are in the risk taking behavior there are some obvious chances of failures and we have to take care, we have to safeguard those failures also. So, its profits are reinvested in the company and not used to support other processes. So, these according to Osterberg, these are the five components of awareness essential for good business leadership. Now, what could be the problems with trade theories are there? In trade theories, the list of potential trade is endless. So, mm. And these traits, mm, mm, test scores are not very significant because tests, mm, these traits act in com combination. And what is the effect of single trait on leadership pattern development? We just cannot trace it. So, mm, and patterns of effective leader behavior depends mostly on the situation in which this leadership function is performed. So, mm, and it. Mm, Traits offer little insight on what the leader actually does on the job. It may tell who is a probable leader who or who can become a leader if given a chance and if the leader is in a proper situation but it uh, does not mean like that that per person actually gets a scope of uh, showing his leadership abilities and the, or the situation is there and, uh, and there therefore it is not possible like if you define leadership by traits that to find out the for leadership effectiveness what the behavior this person has actually performed. So <coughs> and we do not get insight into it. So these are some of the problems with trait theories. Mm. 
However, though there are certain shortcomings, the approach is not invalid in the sense that Patrick and Locke research findings found that effective leaders do differ from others in drive, motivation, ambition, honesty, integrity and self-confidence. So, um, now what happens is an interesting model, but um, how, um, it is not that much effective in predicting leadership potential because situations have um, become more complex to these business situations have become more complex to this it demands uh, different types of leaderships and the traits could be come not coming up singly but combination of two three different traits which makes it somewhat difficult for study so this is like it remains interesting but um, um, it is not able to like tell about the leadership potential in candidates so next we move on to uh, one of the um, leadership style which is called charismatic leadership and we, which which has its base in the great theory of leadership which suggests that some leaders have a gift of exceptional qualities a charisma that enables them to motivate followers to outstanding performance so According to these leadership theory, the followers make attribution of followers make attribution of heroic or extraordinary leadership abilities when they observe certain uh, behaviors. So uh, the um, The leader has to be have a very attractive quality, good like a good power of explanation, attractive way of speaking, attractive way of dressing, maybe. So some some something uh, which um, draws attention and of the followers and ways of motivating, setting, um, giving a very. Um, good emotional talk which um, like boosts up the energy of the followers. These are some of the qualities of a charismatic leader and that is um, where the followers find this leader attractive. So, and they try to define this leader as like the heroic leadership style. So, these, these are called charismatic leadership styles. House describes charismatic leaders as those who have charismatic effects on the followers to an unusually high degree. According to the Congress model, it describes how charisma evolves. Stage 1 is the leader assesses the environment, adapts and formulates a vision of what to do. Stage 2 is leader establishes goals. Stage 3 is leaders work on trust and commitment. And 4, leader becomes role model and motivator. So, these are the 4 steps of charismatic leadership. So, the third part is when you are talking of leaders works on trust and commitment this is where maybe ethical issues come up because you try to gain other people's confidence and trust you should be very ethical in nature and not try to use others for your own purposes so that is that these are some of the areas where leader may differ in their attitudes as far as the relationship with the followers concern like the depth of the trust and whether the trust is misutilized or not and there this could give rise to ethical issues of leadership. So, what constitutes charismatic leadership behavior are like as, as we were already discussing with us just, uh, just a sound, like summary of those like 
it depends on the articulation ability, the way that you speak, the way that you communicate, etc. Affection for the leader, which is the ability to inspire. Third is the ability to inspire. Fourth is the dominating personality and um, attracting personality and like need for influence. It's your need to influence someone. So these are some of the qualities which which defines like the behavior of the charismatic leaders. The key characteristics of charismatic leaders are um, vision and articulation. This is expressed as an idealized goal that proposes a future better than the status quo and is able to clarify the importance of the vision in terms that are understandable to others. Personal risk, that person is willing to take personal risk, incur high cost and engage in self-sacrifice to achieve the vision. Environmental sensitivities, they are able to make realistic assessment of the environmental constraints and uh, resources needed to bring out changes. One who is sensitive to follow needs, perceptive of others' abilities and responsive to their needs and feelings. Mm. And, and unconventional ways of behaving engages in behaviors that are perceived as mm, novel and counter to norms. So these are certain aspects of mm, or the characteristics of charismatic leader. So power of articulation, having a vision and translating it to others and risk taking ability, followers need sense, ability to understand the followers needs, ability to scan the environment and understand the environment and realizing the constraints in the environment, how like what changes need to be adapted. These are some of the good qualities of um, charismatic leaders. Behavioral approaches, when you are talking of behavioral approaches, these are job centered and employee centered leadership. Mm. Psychologist Scott Lewin, mm. according to him, the, there are different types of leadership like the autocratic leaders, laissez faire group and democratic group. The autocratic leader groups tended to be mm, quarrelsome and work progressed at a modest rate. When the leader was not present, work came to halt. The laissez faire group ran haphazardly and work progressed at a slow rate. The democratic groups ran smoothly even when the leader was absent and the relationship of group members were more friendly. So why this was the difference? Because democratic leaders opened the uh, openly discussed issues with group members and encouraged them to join in making decisions. Mm. According to Uris in 1964, like this um, argued that the effective leaders, it's, it's not bad to be autocratic all as if you're or dem and it's not always good like to be democratic also. But what we can see like it's the, these three methods are fit for certain type of situations and a good and effective leader is one who does a max, uh, mix and match of the situation and changes the leadership style accordingly to the needs of the situation. During 1950s, leadership studies were conducted at Ohio State University and the University of Michigan. So, these studies like the Ohio State leadership studies um, resulted in the creation of leader behavior descriptive questionnaire that is LBDQ and which is commonly used to assess leadership behavior. Leadership, the Ohio State studies consider two behavioral um, constructs, consideration and initiating structure. In consideration, those items were indicated that um, declare a leader's friendliness, supportiveness and compassion. Initiating structures were the items that indicated the degree of structure that a leader imposed on subordinates like deadlines, assigned tasks and you have to follow up and you have to give a feedback, you have to follow standard procedures etc. So 
it was found like in a study like turnover rate was negatively correlated with correlation and positively correlated with um, initiating structure although they emphasize like the um, non linearity of the relationship so um, so what we can say like after a certain level uh, increased consideration or decreased initiating structure both are bad so and um, and they have um like um, um they have ultimately in the sense no effect on the leadership uh, behavior so turnover rate and grievance rate so beyond certain critical level like what we try to tell over here is like um, too much of consideration is um, both with no consideration and too much of consideration both are bad and there has to be balanced of balance approach both of consideration and initiating structure if if we are to uh, have a good performing uh, group the university of michigan leadership studies um, were a series of correlation correlational studies and um, the two leadership styles which are important from here are the whether it's whether it is job centered or employee centered so one who is job centered is a close supervision structure and use of coercive techniques rewards and legitimate power to influence subordinate behavior one who is employee centered one who is employee centered it involves delegation of authority helping subordinates satisfy their needs and creating a supportive working environment the leader is concerned with follower personal growth and achievement so again it has to be a balance so these are only if you can understand these are only classifications like whether you have to be ta- whether you task centered or or you, you are like employee centered but being too much of task centered with without being concerned with the employees needs is also something which is not desirable and being too much of employee centered so that the task at hand gets neglected that is also not a desirable state for the organization what requires to be like a balanced state of a balance of both being employee centered and the task centered so there are three types of leadership behavior patterns like relationship oriented participative leadership and task leadership so um, task oriented behavior is the same as initiating structures in the oeo studies and relationship relationship oriented are similar to consideration construct so um, what is the difference is that in oeo studies participative leadership was given a separate with um, separate category as from the other relationship oriented behaviors mm, so we can see the four leadership styles as mm, exploitative authoritative benevolent autocratic participative and democratic mm. we see like the different forces the characteristics like leadership process which is no confidence and trust in subordinate yeah. to increasing degree to when you are moving to a system for democratic complete confidence and trust in subordinates motivational force for group 1 system is physical security economic needs and some use for desire for status and as we progress towards the right hand side so um, is like um, full utilization of everything like economic status ego and other major motives arising from the group goals so having again what we're telling a focus on both when you're talking of communication is very little when you're concerned with this autocratic exploitative leaders and much of communication between individuals and groups when you're talking of a democratic leader and this is a progressive from very little to much 
this this is a progression that we find as we move from the styles of in, exploitative leadership to democratic leadership style when you're talking of interaction in the exploitative style there is little interaction and whatever interaction is there there is always with fear and mistrust and when you're talking of democratic style um, it, it it is a like extensively friendly interaction and it moves through the process, two stages of little interaction and usually with some like fear and when you to and moderate interaction in the previous two stages of benevolent autocratic and participative leadership style when you're talking of decision making in exploitative authoritative it's bulk of decisions at the top level of the organization when you're in the democratic style it's decision making which is done throughout the organization well integrated through the process and and it's pro- provided like linking process which is provided by overlapping groups goal setting in the auto uh, exploitative authoritative group is the orders are issued and when when you're talking of it moves through a stages of orders issued and um, but the opportunity to comment may exist in benevolent autocratic in participative or we leadership is going for goals are set and orders are issued and after discussion with somebody it is really democratic like the goals itself emerge from the groups and the groups participation so these are the ways in which like the it shows a progression and shows how the followers get involved in the whole process of like deciding for the group when you're talking of participative leadership it, it talks of a leadership style in which participative leaders de- describe to the degrees to which other people in the group can influence the leader's decision so the decision is autocratic in nature when others when the manager seeks no input from the other people it is consultation decision when he seeks in- opinions from others but makes the decision alone the joint decision is where manager and others discuss the problem and make a joint decision delegation decision is one where the manager gives others the authority to make the decision and these are the four types of decision and you can point it out like it's a it can't in name it's a degree rather than putting it into con mm, mm, like separate mm, categories and mm, like mm, participative decision making is mm, more when you're talking of either joint decisions or like delegation of decision the first studies were conducted by levin lipit and white in 1939 and mm, it is claimed that participative management results in improved decisions facilitation of change and identification of the leadership and high level of achievement because you can understand how when it is a joint decision where people are giving their opinion regarding the decision to be taken or when they are taking the decision on behalf of the leader they are totally involved in the process of decision making and they know the process of decisions and know the alternatives know the solutions that's why th- th- this is an improved this leads to improved decision making and facilitates change because they are involved in the process the people about whom the decisions are taken are when they are involved in the process of decision making this makes change more easily acceptable because those changes will affect them and they have to react to the changes and adjust with them so when they are involved in the decision making process uh, acceptance of the decision and facilitation of the change happens hmm. so sometimes participative leadership works and in certain times it doesn't like when when there is a situation of emergency and some answer lots of uncertainty is there when when the followers themselves are not developed enough to make mature decisions in those cases hmm, 
participative leadership is um, not something which is possible and maybe the leader has to take some benevolent autocratic decisions and not allow or go for participations in situations of emergency and when the followers are not mature enough or time is a constraint we have to take these factors into consideration to find out whether participative leadership is the answer for the situation that we are in. So, though these two studies have focused on the leadership behavior pattern, but they have not um, shown what, what is the performance satisfaction efficiency outcome in these leadership styles. The managerial greed and the Blake and Martins, they have given two um, behavioral dimensions. That is one is the concern for people and the other is the concern for production. So, in the in one axis concern for production is given and the other axis concern for people is given it is divided into nine grids uh, nine points in both ways and the different we get different leadership styles like country club leadership which is more high people and low production orientation so this is more concerned with the needs and feelings of the team members so they feel like as long as team members are happy, they will be performing more. So it's a very relaxed and fun filled environment. But in that case, production may suffer due to lack of direction and control. Produce or perish leadership is very high production oriented, low people oriented. In that case, there, there could be a stress amongst the people like because they're always target oriented, maybe there is no fun environment. So strict there are strict work rules policies and procedures and we use punishment as the most effective means to motivate employees impoverished leadership this low production and low people so it is most ineffective leadership style middle of the road is middle production medium people who takes like this balance between you know, the two competing concerns so now, it may appear to be the ideal compromise, but you don't know like hmm, neither production or nor people it, uh, needs are fully met. So, in some cases, hmm, these people have to settle for average performance. The best is the leadership style, which is team leadership, which is high production, high people oriented. So, hmm, they treat both the production needs and the needs of the people equally high. So, when the people understand the organization's goal and that is related with their own goal, so they can understand like for by reaching the organization goal only their own goals can be fulfilled. So, organization's success and then they participate in the organization's success and then by being a part of that success, they also get recognition and they can fulfill their personal dreams. So their needs and the organizational goals coincide. And that's how there is a complete blend of these two needs, like for high production orientation and high people orientation. So it is a mutual environment which is based on trust, respect, and which leads to high performance and um, motivation, inspiration, and as a result which leads to high production. So we end over here and for this and we will continue in the next lecture with other leadership styles which are present and find out like what are the like different constraints in terms of like when we are discussing contingency leadership what are the situational factors which may act as a constraint and where people have to change their leadership styles should one style be always followed. Uh, or uh, same leader can fo follow different styles according to the situations. We will go through these discussions in the next two subsequent lectures. Thank you.